Well, uh, morning and welcome. Um, so Edwin and I had an amazing chat yesterday. <laughs> Even two brains can make a good conversation. <laughs> um, and, and out of that conversation that we were talking about fear, that's sort of been the, the, the theme <coughs> way is who are we and, and um, uh, and how do we show? How do we show up? How much of ourselves do we show up? We spoke about vulnerability, and then we spoke about some of the upside of fear or some irrational fears, um, and then um, uh, then also testing the limits. So yesterday, Edward and I were talking about. So what about those people who almost challenge that fear and and and. Um, the, the, there's this risk that they, they keep putting themselves out. And uh, we, we, one of the comments that Edward made was um, that people are, are afraid of technology uh, and they're not actually engaging with new technology. And obviously Zoom being the most prevalent technology that we've had to get used to or many of us um, have in the last, uh, since, since us all going digital and virtual uh, because of lockdowns. And, and that there's some people who, who aren't even touching Zoom. You know, it's like, no, that, that's technology. I don't want to touch that technology. It's too new or it's too, I, I don't, I'm not, either I'm not bothered or I am afraid. Uh, and I, and it's interesting because that specific example of Zoom, I was sitting with a friend of mine that I went to school with. So we're the same age, 56, and uh, he runs a business, two businesses, and he's run very successful businesses. And uh, so we were chatting and he said, oh, I can't be bothered with Zoom. I, you know, I get somebody else to set it up for me and, and all the rest of it. And I said to him, you can't do that. You can't decide that you can't learn new technology at the age of 56 because technology is only going to get more and uh, increase. And we can, we, if, you don't, if you're not keeping pace with what's happening now, what's going to happen when you're 60 and 70 and 80? Uh, and the technology, that's, does that mean that you're just going to just slowly, slowly just become irrelevant? because you can't, you need other people to, to do the technology for you. And uh, he said, oh, no, 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 and of course, you know, brushed it off. But, <laughs> but it just was a, a, just a comment and it just was an interesting um, thought after what, what Edward was saying. So this is my long introduction just to, to kind of open the conversation around you know, how do you deal with new technology? What do you think about? What are you, why, why do you think people are afraid uh, or reluctant uh, to embrace new technology or different technology? Um, and Herman, maybe let's start with you. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, let's just hear, hear what you have to say. Well, there are um, limits to, to what I can do and um, and where I need help. But uh, looking at Zoom, I've really embraced it. Um, I, uh, over the last couple of months, I don't know how many hours I've spent on Zoom, um, whether locally, internationally. Um, I think I shared with you that I'm repeating that, that theory U course from, from MIT, which is a a four months course completely online. I mean, they started in 2015 uh, launching a prototype which I participated in as, as a MOOC. And uh, ever since it's, it's run over, as I said, a, four, a, four, a, three, a three months period from September to, to December. And there are thousands of participants from all over the world. And you form little groups, for example, we, uh, 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 Sharma has created a concept which he calls a coaching clinic and you create a coaching circle. So I'm a part of a circle where two people are from Norway, uh, two from France, uh, Herman from South Africa and a, a woman from India. So uh, from that point of view, I'm, I'm fully in. However, 
to give you an example, I battled with, with my LinkedIn account. The other day I cleared all my history. And so the automatic kind of, you know, where, where let's say LinkedIn or Facebook rec recognizes you be, uh, because you You're on mute, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Back to your T here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, Herman. I don't know you how can't... to. And I need help you there. Can... And, and I asked somebody to help me. So, um, but. Sorry. Sorry, Herman. I'm going to interrupt you there because you froze just at the point that you were describing um, what it is that you battled with over the LinkedIn. Right. Uh, and explaining it so sorry why don't you just okay that? Uh, I, as i said i cleared my history out which uh, because your history very often your history allows you autom uh, automatically when you lock on linkedin you don't have to lock in again so it, it recognizes you etc but with clearing the history i couldn't uh, i can't get to my to the to the to the main LinkedIn page I have. I've got three, two are dormant. And there I'm lost. Without help, I can't sort that out. But without emails and um, posting on, on various forums, I, that's a life I can't even imagine anymore. And I tell you what, I will be, if, if I make it to 90, I will still be on the internet. So, yeah. And, and, and Herman, what about other types of technology? Uh, you know, are there things that you, you constantly thinking, oh, I, I need to learn this, or, or I see this is a new something, whatever it is. I, I, I'll give you an example, and, and maybe I'm jumping in here, but um, I'm, I've just been amazed at, uh, you know, my mom is an example to me of somebody who's in a very, she's, she's not a, you know, go get her. And she, I mean, I wouldn't describe her as a Herman who's, who's, who's a very passionate and involved and, you know, wanting to connect and, and make a difference in society. You know, she's a quiet person, just gets on with her life. Um, and she, but arrived in Joburg from Marandera, Zimbabwe, where there isn't even a traffic light. And she, <laughs> literally, and, and she's, had to, she's had to learn how to use a GPS, for example, because um, getting around in Joburg, um, and now she's, she's perfectly fine. She can put the, you know, what she wants into her phone and off she goes. She, she uses that, uh, you know, the GPS on her phone. And there are others, um, yes, we do, <laughs> yes, we do call them robots. I, I use traffic light, especially for you, Edward. <laughs> um, so, and so I've just, you know, she's using the technology that works for her uh, and not being dependent and I think so that's really so I'm just going to just throw that into your call back again Herman and I know the internet is this lifeblood for you but are there other kinds of technology that that work for you or don't work for you well um going back to theory you for me that is a, a it, he calls it a social a new social technology okay now, um, from there, I would look at anything. For, for example, uh, at the moment, I'm going through a book. It's called Atomic Habits, where you very, in very small kind of steps adapt new habits, change old habits, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's a fantastic book. Um, it, and it, it was available uh, uh, free to download. Or, uh, Lee, I've just started mentoring some young people again. So yes, if you look at it from that point of view, because it is a, a you could call mentoring an a technology inverted commas. I told you, I think, 
that at the age of 80, I learned a new language, namely the language of agriculture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, um, uh, I'm very open, but at the same time, I also have to look at the time limit and say, you know what? You've got to focus and you've got to prioritize. It would be lovely to be 30 years, 40 years younger and be able to absorb all what uh, that is available, but you've got to be realistic at the same time. Thanks, Herman. That's really great. Um, I, I do want to say, I would not say that clearing out your LinkedIn account and then not knowing how to get back to it is a, is a, a you know, limitation in technology. I wouldn't even know how to clear out my LinkedIn account. So there's my confession. <laughs> Vernay, what do you think of all of this? I think it, it's, it's quite a, a difficult one for me because I am, um, when my son, my I had had my company for about seven years and then my son, um, was in between things, he was in between ship commitments, and he said he'll help me to drive up business with my company. So um, he did some social media boot camps and that, and, and he came back and then was teaching me how to um, maximize your social media um, visibility. And I was so resistant to it. I just, I didn't want to do it. And he had to really force me and get me to make a year social media plan. And, you know, you've got to post this year and this year and then the next day this year. And I just, I was so resistant to it. But it really brought results. And um, so I, I mentioned a, a little while ago, about a week ago, that I'm taking this period to actually sort of try and create my social media plan for the next year. But I'm finding it incredibly difficult to sit down and actually do it. Because even though um, I know how to do it, I don't want to. And I, I don't know if it's resistant to the technology or resistant to just doing something new <laughs> and something that I'm not that comfortable with. But um, yeah, most technology I don't have an issue with. I don't, I don't have a problem learning it. But there are some things that I feel somebody else has is better capable of doing it and I don't want to learn it. I don't want to learn how my computer works. I want to know how to use the different programs and I will quite happily um, research that and work on that. But if something on my computer breaks, somebody must just fix it. I actually don't want to know how it works. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it's resistant to technology or just a total lack of interest in that portion of what goes on. Um, I'm happy to use the tools, but I don't necessarily want to understand how they work. And I'm the same. Herman, I didn't even know you could delete your, your history on LinkedIn or why you need to delete your history on LinkedIn. And um, I know one of the your partnership guys is offering a lovely course on how to maximise your LinkedIn profile. And he sent me an email about you know, things that he noticed on my profile and what I should change. And it's going to take me 10 minutes to do, but it's sitting in my inbox because I just, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> and I know the benefits of it. Um, so, yeah, and I will seek advice from people as to, I've got, I've got a really good um, storage system called Synology. So no matter where I am in the world, I can access my home files and um, they backed up on a really secure system. But when it breaks, I don't want to know how it works. I, I phone my little IT guy, Brad, and say, look, my Synology is not working, just fix it. Create a shortcut on my computer. I don't want to remember anything. <laughs> um, I don't know if what it is. Um, concerning GPSs, I'll tell you something. I, I love my GPS. I think it's, it's a lovely... Um, facility to have, especially if you're driving on your own as a woman in Joburg, you're not sure where you're going, you don't want to seem to be like, you know, looking at a map and that sort of thing. But before I head off, I will always look at the steps that it's going to take me. I don't just trust myself 
to the GPS and say, well, I will follow you blindly. I will always see exactly how it's going to take me, where it's going to take me, and then I'm happy to let it take me there. So, yeah, that, that's my attitude towards technology. I, I don't resist it, but I have some reservations about it. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I don't resist it, but I have reservations. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. And, and actually, I mean, you think about, I mean, I have blindly followed GPS and it has taken me through some dodgy areas, I can tell you. Um, so, yes, I, I also have to, sometimes the technology does need a human brain behind it as well. Um, yeah, thanks, Rene. I, and I think it's also, it was, as you were talking, it just reminded me that there are things that you just do need to delegate. Um, yes, we need to learn, a, keep a certain amount of things in, in mind, but I'm thinking, I don't ever want to know how my accounts work. Um, I, I, I know that I need to understand my business and I need to understand, I can read my financial statements. I know what's happening in my business. I'm keeping track of it. But I don't want to do the bookkeeping and I don't want to do my tax. I pay somebody to do that. Um, and uh, so we, we have wonderful accountants who, who, who uh, yes, wonderful accountants, love accountants who, who will do that work for me. Uh, I can interpret it and we can have great discussions around it, um, but I don't need to know how it works and, 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 uh, and what and to do the work. So, and, and the same, as you say, in, in IT. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Vinay. Edward, what, uh, tell us your thoughts. Yeah, I, <clears throat> the more I think about it, the more I love this subject, because I think it's full of lots and lots of elements, because yeah, we, we tend to think now about um, computers when we think about technology, but of course, as you, as you rightly say, technologies all sorts of things, you know, cars, steam engines, computers. And I think, but I think there's some special things around computer technology. Um, and I think also it's about the human condition as well, because you think about it, we're quite happy using a car and knowing nothing about how the engine works. Um, and I think it's because it's relatively simple to understand the concept. But when you get into technology, like uh, IT's type technology, and I, and I think with a car, we feel in control because we can start it and we can stop it. We know where the brakes are, we know where the accelerator is, and we know, know where the gear stick is. Um, but with technology, you don't know how it works. You know, how on earth does it work that I plug a lump of something into my socket and up comes all these pretty pictures and then when I press another button I can suddenly see someone in South Africa you know when computers first came along I used to write small code in a program called basic which I'm sure Herman and a few others will remember but even then that wasn't it because it had to be converted into machine code and I remember when when word processors first came out, you used to have to sort of do Alt F10 to underline something or whatever. Now you just press the underline button. But I think we've always had this fear of technology and I think it's the fear of the unknown, the fear of doing something new, because children don't have it. You, know, you give a child an iPad and five seconds later, they spent 2000 pounds on your your account or something. Um, and then gradually, when they're sort of teenagers, they're quite adept at it and so on. And then as they get older, they kind of get less engaged with the new technology that's coming on. So you know, a, a child of six today will be the same as I am now, but with a different bunch of technologies. Um, and I think for, it's also involved with social interactions because zoom is a dif different social interaction to a conversation face to face because you can't really pick up okay it's, it's a lot better than the telephone and imagine we've probably all got aunts who wouldn't use the telephone or grandparents that wouldn't use the telephone 
So it's the same as people that won't use Zoom because the telephone introduced artificiality into the conversation between two people. And Zoom's doing the same thing. Um, yeah, because it's strange, isn't it? Unless you press your button and remember to press your button, you can't interrupt. And on, on this forum, you tend not to interrupt unless you're Trevor. So it, it's a whole series of things going on. Um, and I think when people see the benefits, they will then engage because there are very few people still using a mangle to get their washing dry. Um, you know, everyone embraces the, the washing machine and the spin dryer. Yes, I mean, some people might not even know what a mangle is. Um, but it, 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 in a funny way, and, and I love, um, yeah, I, I mean, Herman's, I saw someone's put, no, Lee's put in the chat. That's why people are resistant to self drive cars. I won't even use cr cruise control on my, yeah, because I want to be in control of the car. Um, but, uh, and, and I think I'm quite good at um, embracing technology. And if I look at myself and my children who are 26 and no, 24 and 29, I've probably got as much skill at technology as they have. But I think I'm probably, uh, you know, an outlier. But as you know, I'm a vegan. I love cooking. I tend to cook a lot of beans and stuff like that. And if you've got dried beans, you've got to soak them, you've got to cook them for thousands of hours. It's a faff. And cooking things like chickpeas and beans in a pressure cooker is a lot quicker. And, you know, pressure cookers, are, I remember we had one when I was a growing up and there were these great things and you put a lid on the thing and, and you clamped it down and you put a weight on the valve and off you go. Well, my daughter bought me for my birthday a pressure cooker, but it's like a, an electronic one. You don't put it on the gas or you don't put it on the electric. You just plug it in and there's lots of little dials to press. Now my birthday was in June. I haven't used it yet because I can't be bothered to read the instructions. So I think you know, it, it, it's a very, very complex subject. And it's all to do with the human condition, our fears, our irrational fears. Um, and But I think as soon as we see the advantages, then we grasp it. I mean, my wife, well, my ex-wife, she would never get into computers. And then one time I was in my study working away and she came in and said, What's our email address? I thought, why do you want to know? And what had happened was she wanted to go and see the horse. Have you heard of a guy called the Horse Whisperer? He trains horses by kindness. And she wanted to go and see him. And she booked up to go and see him in the nearest town. And it had to be cancelled. And um, she got a letter through saying it had been cancelled. And it said, you know, go on the website and you'll find out where and you should give us your e email and so she suddenly wanted to get engaged I said well let's have a look on the website to see where um yeah the next thing is and I started showing her how to go on the internet and then after a few few moments she was elbowing me out the way to get to learn about where the next horse thing was and then she embraced the internet because she saw its benefit um and I think that's the thing it's, we tend not to sell the benefits very much. And I think also think about how people have engaged more with a mobile phone than they have with a PC. It's much easier to do stuff on there because you just go and all the apps work lovely, don't they? Well, I think they do. So I think some ways it's, it's, it's how you present it as well. Um, but that, that's my, uh, I think it's fascinating. I think we could sort of, pick out threads from it and examine those threads. You know, and I'm just amazed at Herman. I, I hadn't, one, I hadn't realized how old he was. And two, I just didn't realize how much he's still learning. So I'm really looking forward to my next 20, 30 years. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So I, because as we we're talking about your pressure cooker, I had to laugh because my mom, my mom's thing, because my mom lives with us, right? So, so I get to see all these things. Um, so her thing is Christmas pudding. She does the Christmas pudding and you do the traditional English stir of the Christmas pudding when you wish and all the rest of it. So we did the wish yesterday and she put her, her Christmas pudding on in the pressure cooker, the same pressure cooker that I had when I was growing up, the big metal thing on the, st on the stove with the screw, <laughs> with the weight. Oh, so funny. And, and as you were also talking, Edward, it just reminded me, I mean, when uh, we, we've all lived long enough to have seen huge, huge changes in technology. Um, and microwaves uh, only came out when I was first married, so 35, 40 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that also was like the, all the, you know, you were going to die and all the warnings about, you know, the radiation that was going to in our food and all the rest of it. Somehow we've all survived microwaves. Um, and, and, but, but I, the next technology, well, not the next, but relatively soon, um, I think we are going to have 3D printers in our homes. We, you know, we used to having faxes and, and then we got home, home printers. Um, because, but now I think we're actually going to have 3D printers. And when we break a cup, we're going to design a new one or put the pattern that we got we, and we can redo, we can print a new cup. And that's just going to be a, another way a, a, and we might resist it. And, and then as you say, Edward, will somebody, something will come along and we'll say, oh, I need this and I can't buy it at the shop. Um, or it's more convenient for me just to put the pattern into, sorry, my, uh, the pattern into my, 3D printer, so let me figure it out. Um, so yeah, it is fascinating. And then uh, the other thing that struck me when Bernay was talking was her son teaching her, uh, her social media and all the things. So I've had those lessons from my daughter as well. <laughs> Just, okay, mom, it's time, sit down. <laughs> this is how Instagram works and so on. But what's fascinating about that is I, I read an article that we are one of the first generations where the younger generation is teaching the older generation. Um, you know, the cycle of life always used to be that older people, because of their life experience, because they had, they knew more and, and because life was relatively predictable, you could more or less see if the life that I've lived, if the lessons I've learned, if I pass them on, um, you, you, they will be replicable uh, in your life in varying degrees, because obviously every generation is different. But because the speed of technology has been so great, we are left uh, as a generation that is needing to now learn from the, the generation behind us. And my daughter's also Edward's age, 26, 20, 29, they are recognizing the generation of the, the TikTok generation that sees things completely differently and has different technology, different way of understanding, and they are having to play catch up. From, from now the generation is, is, is hardly is 10 years, you know, it's getting shorter and shorter. That's what I, how I'm starting to feel old based on technology. So um, yeah, so that's just my my added thoughts into the equation. Anybody else want to add anything else before we close up? No, I just wanted to say we're actually moving away from a linear fashion kind of life into a wavy and possibly even a kind of a circular um, situation. So it's going, yes, I agree, it's very, very different. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, when I when I 
started mentoring people many, many years ago. It was really a top-down approach. Today, mentoring is a partnership. There, there, are, there, there is no superiority. And I learn often from young people just as much um, as they hopefully learn from me being their mentor. Thanks, Herman. Um, Edward? Yeah, two things. The other day I was showing a friend of mine how to use a particular function on her phone and she's 30 and she turned around to me and said, oh, I think it's amazing I can learn about new technology from an old person. <laughs> now that's a compliment. I mean, you really need to see that as, as high praise. <laughs> I ha haven't let her forget that ever since. Uh, um, but the other thing is, the other day, my, my 24 year old daughter posted on Instagram and it was a beautiful picture of some embroidery she'd done. And she said she found, she says, I think I must be 90. She says, but I find it incredibly relaxing. And I thought, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because technology has invaded our lives and perhaps the, you know, the next generation, the generation after that, will perhaps go back more to some of the relaxing stuff, some of the mindful stuff, maybe walking in nature, you know, making your own clothes, doing some embroidery, doing some sort of painting, back to music perhaps, you know, on, on um, real musical instruments rather than electronic ones. So maybe, you know, Herman's right, it's circular, it's waves, but I think if it is waves, it's tsunamis. Yeah, I think retro will always be a fashion. <laughs> um, you know, the one of the fastest selling musical instruments at the moment or technologies are um, turntables. Uh, <laughs> people are going back to to vinyl, um, you know, and it's it's fascinating that you. Uh, they, they want the, the authenticity. I think that's how they experience it. Um, um, uh, uh, Lee, the reason is actually that analog um, is able to transmit warmer sounds than the CDs. It's got to do with frequencies and, and what have you. I got a lecture from, from an old man the other day who... who um, who is a sound kind of specialist and he told me about that because mm. uh, I got hearing aids from him and you know what uh, they are partially analog for the same reason. Ah okay. Well, I mean Herman raises a really good point doing? there. Sorry, I said Herman's got, raised a really good point there because when the technology came along for CDs we had to compromise quality for convenience and I think sometimes that's what happens you know, we, we, we lose the quality because you, you're right a, a vinyl record can produce a much better sound than a digital one um, and I think also you think about photography I'm sure okay most photographers have embraced a digital but there are aspects of photography which are much better without the digital getting in the way. So I think that there is this trade-off, isn't there, between um, convenience and quality. Mm. And, and it's that combination, isn't it, as well? Because I was just thinking, um, as you say, Edward, we can keep on in this, this topic. My, my brother is a, is a professional photographer and um, he, he actually has shoulder problems and elbow problems because of the weight of the bag and the weight of the camera. <laughs> so he is, because he's, and he's holding the, this enormous, I don't know, 20 kg lens um, because he's a wildlife photographer. And uh, so he's, there's no way he is going to do a little click and, you know, digital and all the rest. That's just, he's not going to enable him to get the, the artistry that he wants. However, when he does his editing, 
he uses state of the art software. Um, so it's that combination that that we we playing with the whole time, isn't it? And that's where this um, the creativity and the technology and the human element. And so, uh, you know, we maybe another time we can have a conversation of you know how do we how do we bring both human and technology together that uh, that that we're using the best of both because there's a lot of fear around technology and we, that's another discussion that we don't have to start down now but uh, you know that taking my job and all the rest of those things which of course is real but uh, yeah um, the thing that so let, let me just end with this because I just did want to just mention it because I thought it is fascinating this launch of Elon Musk's rocket that crashed um, and was then celebrated as a success. And I just thought, now, what does that tell us about life and innovation and, um, you know, how you frame things and working with people? And the first thing my husband said is, because he's been so transparent about it, this isn't a test that they did out in the desert, desert that nobody saw. Um, that he said, you know what? People are going to get into that rocket to go to Mars because they, he has proven that he is, uh, uh, that people will trust, they will have confidence that because they've seen the failures, they will also then see the successes. Uh, because they've seen the process, because he's been open. They, you know, that was my husband's first response. And uh, I just thought it was an interesting reflection because it seemed to combine everything that we've been talking about over the last couple of days, which is uh, fear, uh, technology, vulnerability, you know, what do we share? What don't we share? Uh, so I thought that was quite an interesting uh, e example from, from this week. Uh, and so we're going to change direction tomorrow because Edward, um, out of this, uh, in fact, it's not, it's not changing direction at all because it's coming out of the discussions that we've had. And, and Vernet, you prompted it uh, for Edward. And, and it was you and I talking about what motivates us. That's that there've been uh, aspects of our lives where we've been motivated by fear where fear is what's got, out of, got us out of bed to provide for our families or to pass an exam or whatever the case may be, to meet a deadline. Um, and, and Edward was saying, but isn't it also a desire that pulls and that you, 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 you wanting to uh, go, you know, the, the excitement of the vision or what it is that, that um, is, is pulling you rather than pushing you, you know, from, from behind. And, and so the discussion tomorrow is about carrots and sticks. You know, what, are, what incentivizes us? Um, is it more the, the juicy carrots, you know, out front or is it the stick behind? Uh, so let's, let's um, end 2020, <laughs> it may seem very appropriate <laughs> as to, you know, carrots and sticks, what's gonna get us going? Um, and what has, for in 2020 and what's going to keep us going in 2021. Uh, so we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye.